And all you people watching, if you want a nice little slump habit. <laughs> You might just as well, and then see what you can do to ease your slump. I was meaning to ask you, Marjorie, when you're working on people, are you doing all what we get taught, which is to work on yourself while you're putting your hands on? Yeah. You're doing that all the time? Sure. Right. Otherwise, my hands would feel like that. Do you like that? No, no, that's heavy hands. <laughs> it's not Alexander. <laughs> The first thing that I think is very important to help people realize that it is a very unique and unusual approach to the study of movement. Oh, when I have a, a group of new people coming for a workshop, the first thing is to help them recognize their habits that they have developed in their everyday things, like they sit, they walk, they talk. And in the process, as we've grown up, all of us develop a few habits which are really a waste of energy because they put a heavy downward pressure on our bodies, interfere with the flexibility of our whole respiratory mechanism, and <clears throat> put a heavy tension in the lower part of our bodies. Well, what do you think about yourself when you're Well, running? I immediately noticed that I hung on for grim death and there's no chance of me being knocked over by a lorry, that I didn't <laughs> need to have to put so much energy into my hands. And normally I'd have a much higher seat, so I think I'd probably lean forward a bit. And I noticed that my head bobbed up and down. Oh, uh, yes, it does. It goes with your legs. They go together <laughs> like this. <laughs> All right, what about all the tension through here? Bang no. away. Here you go. Now all of this moves easily up. So you get way down to the Now you move forward and take a hold of the handlebar. Now this continues as you go someplace. Oh, I could do it for hours. <laughs> what does that do? Oh, it's amazing. You're, I'm only using my legs, which is of course all I need to use. I sure you don't need to grab that that tight. <laughs> I thought I was doing better. <laughs> I'll come back. 
Now as you move forward, your head and body are easing this way now. Gently put your hands and hold that handle forward. Now this continues, this continues as you use your legs. What does that do? Well, it, it certainly feels a lot easier, but I, I start to feel a, a pulling down here. That's right, you are. Now come back, you're pulling down here too. This goes up, now you go forward. Mm. Anybody see any difference? Mm. Now you, that's what you do. You might make it to Paris in a few years. <laughs> mm. I don't, are you supposed to go fast or slow or? Well, what you, what you do is increase the tension so that you really don't go fast. You only go about that fast, but it's a lot of hard pressure on your legs by just increasing the tension. So that you don't, you don't go fast, but you use a lot more drag on your leg. Yeah, but what about all of this? You collapse to do this. This moves up. There you go. Now off you go. What does that do? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> but what does it do for you? Well, it okay. lengthens. That's it certainly right. lengthens. It takes the pressure off. Can you see that? It takes a lot that? of the pressure off my, my hips. That's right. Then it gives you freedom here. Yeah. All of this begins to move right up there. And you get your eyes off of the floor. This time you're going to think about it. <clears throat> you're going to move your head this way. All of this moves up in this direction. But this has to continue. There you go. You see that? See? You people have to actually move your bodies. You have to actually move your head. But it's the delicacy of the movement. Take, there you are. Now, was that different? You have to be sure that you let your body follow. Now, what most So I'm not letting my body follow me down. Yeah. You, you don't you don't sense a little movement. You see the little movement my body takes there. What you're doing is put, trying to put your head up like this, and then leaving my body behind. And then this all stays behind. You see that? And that's creating the oh, that increases the tension in there because I'll go down this way a little bit. Watch. I'm down. You'll be able to see it easier. Now if I don't like that and my head moves. Watch my body. Can't you see that everything moves yes, yes. at once? Yes. Now, uh, most of you have a habit of, of this, your chest out a little bit. See, like that. Now, when I come to help you, my hands are suggesting that you move up and the, your body moves forward. And then a, in, a, yeah, in a split second, this is going to tag along, isn't it? Because right. you can't leave your legs back there and put yourself over there, can you? Right. Yeah. So, so what I'm doing is leading with my head and, and leaving everything else behind. That's right. It wants to come up with it. Well, it will come 
if you start doing this. <laughs> The is that mostly I want to look up, which might be a habit or it might be because I'm short and most of the people around seem to be... Well, I've always... Well, well what's... Yes, about that. yes. And now is that listen, just... Listen, you have to... We all looked up quite often during the yeah. day. But what most of our problems are that when we look up, we do it with a jerk and then we do this. Do you see that? So... If somebody tall comes and you want to talk to them, just very easily, there you are. See how easy that is? Now that's great. Doesn't that feel good? Yes, that's quite different to what That's I right. So you see, I have to help you learn how to stop that quick jerky thing. Doesn't do anything for you. Now this will let your body go off very easily. There you are. Over the years, as I've worked with Marjorie Barstow, one of the things that has impressed me is her willingness to be constantly experimenting with herself and with her students. After she's established the head-neck relationship, or primary control, she often takes her students into activities, and walking being one of those things that we do all the time. She's a master at observation, and teaching her students also how to observe. Another of her innovations has been work with groups. As you sit in the group, she might turn to you and say, what did you see? What did you notice? Engaging the whole group in the process of observation and learning. This was my first workshop with Marge and it really quite radically altered the whole way I approached teaching. Uh, before I worked with Marjorie, the experience for me was the God. I had to give this person this wonderful experience to leave with or I'd failed. Uh, and I really never related to the students. What Marge did is she really talked to people. She got people to think about what she called constructive thinking, constructively thinking about the experience she was giving them. And she would give them a little experience. She might take their head and take their torso, get them to move up a little bit so they could sense a change. As soon as that change was there, then she would move them off. And what I realized is that gave people much more something that they could use for themselves, something that was more accessible. It wasn't a kind of mystical experience anymore. It was a simple little movement, and then they would walk off. It's going to shift. So when you start walking, instead of setting this, this isn't going to be in a special place. And what more, it's never going to feel the same at any time because you're improving a little bit all the time. Do you see that? Right. Yeah. So you're going to sense a little more delicacy. And there you go. Let your body follow it. Look around, go talk to somebody. <laughs> there you are. Now move, go on, move. Easy, easy. Let your feet come down very lightly to the ground. Easy now. Easy, move, move your leg. I'll help you right here. Now as you move, just let your foot go where it wants to. Easy. Easy, let it go where it wants to. Now what did that seem like? more orderly than what I was doing. All right. So can you tell what I helped you with? Well, perhaps remove them from the pelvis. That's right, because the thing you were doing, it was back of where it comes down. Right. Then you have to throw your hips forward to do that. Yeah. So if you let your head and body move together, the weights on this, come on. Now let that foot drop where it wants to. Let each foot drop where it wants to. Wait a minute. A little bit of ease here. Now, all of this is going to move up this way. And that's going to feel different because you, everybody wants to push this hip forward. Now instead of pushing that forward, your head and your body start to move 
then this other leg moves. And what does that do? Well, it feels as if I'm <laughs> shooting off a bit, That's which is right. not what I'm used to. I know you're right. You're, we're all used to this. See that? <laughs> See, that's just the thing. And so this is a little bit easy. There, can't you sense that ease mm. right there? Mm. Now that's all you want. You're not going to do any more than this. <clears throat> but your head and your body, there you go. Now let one knee go forward. That's it. Now you did two or three steps very nicely and then you went back to, that's all right, but that's the way you learn. See, now that you know that. All right, let's have, I think, Bill, you can help us. Three people you work with and three people I work with, and I think the rest of you can watch six people at a time, can't you? Yeah. Then we can get through and do a little bit more. As you start walking, let this move, let your body move and take off. In the process of your walking, you're going to improve. Do you, do you get that? In the process of walking, you're going to get your improvement. And that's easy. And here's just a very, very little delicate. Instead of squeezing these together, this is the thing you're going to watch. That, the, that this moves off in this direction. Now let's take a walk. And what? And let my body follow. What for? So I can move. Now what do you notice as each foot touches the floor? I think you're holding a position yeah. just yeah. a little bit. Did she look a bit stiff? Yeah. All right. Now, okay. why did you, why don't you do this little thing? Mm -hmm. What does this feel like? Uh, All right. So mm -hmm. now this continues as you move your legs. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. All right. There you go. Yeah. I don't have to make them feel like they feel like now. I was trying they, to make them feel like before. You can't make your legs feel light. But if they are tense, you can release the tension, the downward pressure on your body that makes them heavy. See that? Because this wasn't yeah. off them. Anymore. That's right. Now, does that give you enough of walking, or do you want a little more? She's getting pretty serious, isn't she? Yeah. You always move better with a smile. They say that's what our noses are for. <laughs> All the nose experts say that's what your nose is for, to let the air come in, and your mouth is to let the air come out. It feels much freer. All right, now just take it, close your, close your lips. Take a minute to think about following my hands, and then go on. 
Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Close your lips. Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Close your lips. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. Close your lips. The summer's lease hath all too short a date. All right, how are we doing? Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines. And often is his old complexion dim. I move right up here. And every fair from the fair up here. sometimes declines by chance or nature's changing for something. Now what is that doing for you? It's freeing. Mm -hmm. Freeing a lot of tension. That's right. Now how does it happen it's doing that? Because I'm lengthening my spine. But you're lengthening I mean, your, by lengthening my body, my, my whole neck. Your whole body is getting a little bit of freedom to allow your respiratory mechanism to get in air. Mm. Now, can't you do this by yourself? I should be able to, yes. Yes. So go on right up there and do it all by yourself. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? No, on that first word was shell. Hmm? Yep. All right, so instead of stiffening your legs with shell, go right up here and leave your body free. Now, no, you move here to say shell. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Did you get that shell? <laughs> All right, now sit down and think about that. Thank you. You're still muggy. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm doing the Alexander technique. <laughs> Thank you. 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 As you talk, you would move up here a tiny bit. Right over here. Now turn your head way around and talk to this person who's right there. It makes you really turn your head, doesn't it? Hi, I don't actually know your name. Go on, let's hear your point. As an unperfect actor on the stage, who with his fear is put beside his part, or some fierce thing replete with too much rage, whose strength's abundance weakens his own heart. All right, now what do you notice about yourself? I'm racing. <laughs> yes. Now what, what's going to happen if you will, on the first word that comes out, if you will very easily move your head and your body a little bit up in this direction and notice on the first word that your body is moving this way. Now go on, you can talk to all these people. As in, uh, 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 uh. Now as goes up. All right. As. That's all right, go on. As an unperfect actor on the stage who with his fear is put beside his part, or some fierce thing replete with too much rage. So I, whose strength's abundance, whose strength's abundance weakens his own What's this? Watch this. What's that doing? Right, now close your lips. I don't think you're getting much air in, are you? No. This doesn't feel like it to me. Your, your voice sounds just a little bit tired, does it? Just not a little bit of a... I feel like I've gone almost... It feels like I've gone up above where I can... Like I'm... Yeah, but you... Above where I can breathe. But you hadn't, had you? I don't know. Yes, you do, because you just went up and pulled yourself up real swift. Pull yourself up again. Now, do you like that or does it hurt? No, I can't breathe. <laughs> That's right, you can't. 
because you've set your ribs. You see yeah. that? Now, you don't, you don't go down to get breath. You head and body move up, close your lips. The air will never go in through your nose if your mouth is open. There you are. Now you've got some air, haven't you? Mm -hmm. All right, now go on and speak. Now leave your way, close your lips. Now let the air go in through your nose, and when you now go on and talk. Oh, let my books be then the eloquence and dumb presages of my speaking breast. Is there any difference in her voice? What did you hear? Did it bother you? I wasn't listening to myself. Oh, you better. You go on and re do a little bit more and you hear, your, listen to your voice and see what it sounds like. How do you know what it's going to sound like to those people if you don't hear it? You hear it a little bit differently to be sure, but you still hear it. All righty, now just do a bit more. Who plead for love and look for recompense more than that tongue that more hath more expressed. Now close your lips. Let the air go in through your nose and this will move right up there. What does that do for you? It's very really different. It's very oh. different. Learn to read what silent love hath writ. Is that different? You begin to hear her words, don't you? To hear with eyes belongs to love's fine wit. Now, does that give you some help? Yeah. <coughs> Still feel a bit like I'm holding onto my breath somewhere it gets caught. You are, because you will not close your lips and let the air go in through your nose, see? You don't get enough air in at a time to get through a whole mm. uh, a phrase. And as your lips just barely, they just barely come together. And in a split second, the air will rush in through your nose. Think about that. Mm -hmm. We'll do some more tomorrow. Boiled over the city stood a lonely cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger. All right. Now, these people, I'm not sure they can hear your voice. Can they? No. You've got a big, good voice there. Come on, right up there. Now let's hear you. Once in Royal David City stood a lowly cattle shed. Now, wh who are you talking to? No, I'll look at it. Once in Royal David City stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. There you go now. Can you hear that? They get interested. Off you go again. Mary was that mother mild. Oh, right up there. Jesus Christ and the child. Tuck your little tag in and I'll think you. they'll make you talk better. <laughs> now this is going to move right up with me. There you go. Now, come on, let's have some more. It is unfortunate that the British went to India at the time they did. <laughs> at the time they did. Because had the British not come to India, it is possible that the Mughal Empire may have found within itself strong enough personalities of Indian nationality who may have united the country. And therefore, at this time, India could have been a more, a stronger force in the world. Now, how are we doing? I felt great. Wasn't that nice? Yes, thank you. <laughs>